There you go. There you go. Uh, this is a little bit difficult, as you can see. I don't have one guy uh, doesn't want to cooperate. This is Mop, who's making these strange noises. Used, Mop used to be, uh, when Mop was a kitten, he used to be able to pick him up and he'd start purring instantly. But now he's not so sure about all this. I guess he's a bit shy being on a video at all. So I've had multiple requests from many people that watch my videos to uh, get another one with the cats involved. So that's what we're doing here. No animals are harmed in the filming of this video. At least, uh, you know, I think he's okay now with the food. So what I'm talking about here is I'm going to talk about this book, Drawdown. It's called Drawdown, the most comprehensive plan ever proposed to reverse global warming. Edited by Paul Hawken. It was just released uh, recently. So, you know, a lot of the videos that I do talk about uh, the very serious, very rapid changes in the climate system and feedbacks that uh, lead us to ever increasing, you know, rates of change with things. So this video is kind of a balance to let you know that there's a lot of people out there that are thinking of, you know, what we can do. And I've also mentioned in the past uh, the three-legged bar stool. You know, we need to slash fossil fuel emissions. We need to remove, uh, apply CDR, carbon dioxide removal, take CO2 out of the atmosphere, as well as methane, you know, or at least draw down the levels. You know, if we can actually figure out methods to remove it from the atmosphere, you know, once we slash it, removing it from the atmosphere would drop levels. Um, and also solar radiation management is the third leg of the bar stool. You know, things get out of hand, go too quickly. We can actually cool, um, cool the atmosphere, cool the planet, you know, fa fairly quickly um, on a temporary basis. So anyway, Mop uh, was stealing the show there. So I'm going to talk about some of the principal methods for drawdown. It'll surprise you because it surprised me. I'll talk about the top uh, 15 uh, methods. So... If you haven't read the book, you're going to be covered in cat fur. Um, get rid of your cats is number one. No, I'm just, ah, I can't do that. Well, we're all, we're, forget it. We're doomed if that's, uh, you got to get rid of your cats. Actually, pets isn't mentioned in this book at all. There's a hundred different things in here. You know, not everything is mentioned. It's things that they thought of. Very interesting uh, website www.drawdown.org and uh, I recommend that you go there and have a look at the studies. So for each method there's um, the idea is what can we do by 2050? How many gigatons of carbon can we remove from the atmosphere? What is the cost? You know if we do all these things we then we can get sort of like a ranking right? Um, and, uh, you know, there's no one simple solution, no one difficult solution. You know, it's a multiple of things that we need to do. Okay, so let's get into it. So the first thing with the most impact, the most impact of reducing gigatons of carbon by 2050 is refrigerant management. If you can believe that. So what are we talking about with that? Well, you know, we have refrigerators galore. We transport food. You know, we all eat loads of food. There, you know, there's, they're not, a lot of food is not grown locally. Okay, growing it locally can help a lot. But in the meantime, we all have refrigerators, or lots of us have refrigerators, unless you're in third world uh, countries. And um, you go to a store, there's all these rows and rows of bins with refrigerators, refrigerant. Um, you know, there's air conditioning in houses and cars. You know, huge number, huge growth in air conditioning, you know, around the world, you know, as it's getting hotter. Of course, the hotter it gets from climate change, the more air conditioners are, there are, and therefore the more power that is being used, and therefore the hotter it gets. So the refrigerants in particular, we used to use CFCs and, and, and also HCFCs, but then because they were taking out the ozone layer, 
which we determined and had world action on in the Montreal Protocol in 1987. We really, we, we outlawed and banned the use and phased out most CFCs and HCFCs, although there's still a lot kicking around. So there's still some that are causing problems with the ozone layer, but for the, for the vast majority of uh, refrigerators and coolant systems, we actually um, switched to, um, from CFCs to HFCs. And that's not HCFCs, it's HFCs. And HFCs are okay with the ozone layer, but they're a very powerful greenhouse gas. So there's, they come in a number of different forms. The, um, the different forms have global warming potentials from you know, 1,000 to uh, 9,000. So they're very powerful greenhouse gases. Although the concentrations are extremely small right now, they are rising, they are uh, contributing to climate change. And when you have, uh, it's mostly in the disposal of them. There's some leakage in the lines, of, of, but most of the lines are, feel, are sealed pretty good, whether it be in your car or an air conditioning uh, unit for a residence or a built-in unit in a building or something. Most of them are sealed fairly good. But uh, they have, at their end of life, they're disposed of. And when they're disposed of, that's when 90% of the, of the HFCs are, are released uh, to the atmosphere. So this is actually, under a plausible scenario, there's three scenarios, plausible, drawdown, and optimum. Um, the plausible, about almost 90 gigatons reduction of, green, of, of, of carbon by 2050, um, if we have better refrigerant management. The drawdown scenario is 96 gigatons and, and as well as the optimum scenario. Okay, so in the drawdown scenario, we can actually um, reduce emissions, reduce levels of greenhouse gases. You know, if we slash fossil fuel emissions and do the drawdown scenario, then we start removing it from the atmosphere. And the optimum scenario is sort of the best case scenario. Okay, so that's number one, refrigerant management. And that may surprise a lot of people. You know, when people think of solutions, they think solar panels, right? Well, solar panels are on there, but they're not nowhere near number one. Okay, uh, number two, the number two, ranking number two solution is wind turbines on shore. Okay, and that's about 85 gigatons in the plausible scenario. I'll just talk about the plausible for comparison. So about 90 refrigerant management, wind turbines, 85 and this is onshore. You know, we build a lot more onshore than offshore because the technology developed. It's a lot easier. And, uh, you know, we'll be moving a lot to uh, offshore, you know, as these things get better and better. So that's number two. That's not a surprise. Wind has been growing by in leaps and bounds. Um, number three is, maybe, the third best is reduced food waste. Okay, this is a huge thing. We waste about a third of the food that we grow. Think of all the fossil fuels that are going into fertilizers, into farm machinery, uh, you know, sowing the seeds, harvesting the seeds, processing the seeds, and then um, storing, and then getting the stuff to market, transporting it long distances, etc. You know, so reduce food waste. You know, you get some fruit or something and it's a bit discolored or it's a bit bruised or damaged or something and you know we throw it out or you get a huge meal at a restaurant and there's all this food wasted you know reduced food waste is number three it's the third best way to draw down or, or reduce uh, co2 uh, reduce carbon that goes into the atmosphere and oceans our carbon em emissions so so this is uh, very very important and associated with that number four is another food thing. It's uh, the plant-rich diet, okay? Eat better, eat less, eat more plants, okay? Not talking about giving up, you know, some people, the, the, the carbon footprint of a vegan is something like 70% lower than, a per, than, than uh, you know, sort of a, a, a traditional diet. A vegetarian is about 63% lower. Um, so, just um, not talking about necessarily just completely giving up, you know, meats and, and dairies and cheeses and stuff. I mean, uh, but going to a, having, you know, not, you know, a steak once a month instead of every week or something, 
you know, um, just a little bit of change in diet, it not only makes people a lot healthier, reduces the burden on the healthcare systems and stuff, people are healthier, they're more energetic, um, the carbon emissions are greatly reduced. So plant-rich diet is number four, that's about 66 gigatons. Tropical forest is, is number five. So it's important where the forests are. You know, if you're up in, if you're in the tropics, um, it's not going to be, you know, it's basically right at the equator, 12 hours of light, 12 hours of day, year in, year out, no seasonal change really. Um, and these tropical forests, you know, there's lots of rainfall, these things can grow very fast, they can sequester a lot of carbon into the, into the soils. Um, they don't lose their leaves, you don't have the deciduous trees there, right? Because they're not in, uh, they don't experience season, so it's, so it's these uh, tropical forests, you know, huge numbers of leaves, very fast growing, huge numbers, huge amount of carbon capture per acre of tropical forest. So that's number five. Number six and seven are very surprising probably to most people. Uh, remember, this is drawing carbon, drawing down, having less carbon emissions. So drawing down CO2 in the atmosphere. So number six is educating girls. More educated girls um, are in school and uh, for longer and they become more educated. They become more willing and able to make their own informed choices on, um, for, for example, how many kids they'll have. Um, and number seven is family planning, which goes with educating girls, you know, having contraceptives available to people, you know, none, no, no more of these huge families. Uh, so, so, so five and six, or six and seven, educating girls and family planning are right up there. Um, and it's not that expensive to do compared to some of the other um, methods of lowering CO2. Solar farms is number eight, so huge uh, arrays of uh, solar panels or solar, that's different from concentrated solar power, um, you know, with mirrors uh, boiling water on a tower, I'm talking about PV farms, large scale, okay, these are popping up all over, especially in some deserts. Silvoplaster, silvopasture is number nine. This is the idea of of, of having animals grazing, not just on grasslands, but on lands that contain trees. So the trees are left, trees can be built as fences, um, and the soil is a lot better. You're, you're sequestering carbon both in the vegetation and also in the soil, okay? Uh, with the silvopasture, huge difference. Rooftop solar, PV panels is number 10 on the, on the uh, list. Regenerative agriculture is number 11. Whenever you turn soil, you get a loss of carbon from the soil. Okay, soils have lost about 50% of their carbon. Um, they're, they're just nowhere near as, as, as good. They're, they're worn out from their farming methods. They have to, we have to put all kinds of fertilizers and herbicides and we have monoculture crops and stuff. So, so this is no-till, this is using, um, interspersing different crops in different rows, not having monocultures, things like that. Temperous, temperate forests are number 12. These are forests between 30 and 60 degrees north, okay? Peatlands is a huge store of carbon. When, when peatlands dry out, the carbon, it, re, the reactions release CO2. Some of the peatlands, they can have 50% carbon storage. So we've got to preserve those and increase them. Tropical staple trees, um, is another area, so the trees get on there a lot, and also that's 14, and number 15 is afforestation. So this is putting forests where there never used to be forests. And, and uh, you know, you can start with small trees and work your way up, but um, so, so those things that I've mentioned, those are 15 of, of, of the um, ideas, and they're all very important, and hopefully, um, you know, you can think about some of these things. And I recommend picking up this book. It's a great book. Thank you.